Greetings and welcome to this little update video. I'm going to be updating you on this, my garage and the progress that I've been making in here since the last video where I showed you around and I'm going to be unboxing and prepping a brand new performance part that has been a long time coming. So apart from cleaning up the floor, this area here of the garage is where all the magic has been happening. You probably don't want to see behind me, there's just a lot of clutter. Well, you might be interested to know what is in these boxes, but that's for a different day. So what I've been doing is, if you remember the last time, I already had the cool LED super duper bright lights up. I've got them here and behind me as well, all through the garage, great light. Last time we talked about the positioning of the banner from the Mark III Focus RS Club that Kenny sent me and I put it up here where I said I thought I would and I think it looks great. It's just a nice cherry on top, it's really prominent. It's really cool that it has my own actual reg in there. Go grab yours, you can get yours customized to suit your car as well. Jump on over to the Mark III Focus RS Club, I'll throw a link down in the description box below. You can get your reg put on, you can get the color that your focus is, you can get the front on view, you can get side on view, you can get different sized ones. Go grab them, they are super duper cool and they make your garage look awesome. Other stuff then we've been doing, got a bench in here, it's sort of like concrete effect so it kind of matches in with the sort of <laughs> the rest of the garage. We have the roll cad, this is the first proper like tool thing that I've ever really had before I just shoved all my tools into like a bunch of boxes and it was a nightmare to find stuff sometimes. Now I've started to put together a proper solution and this is the first part of it. I'm probably going to get more bits like this. Um, um, I've got plenty of space here. Well, I've got my race ramp stored under here and for now, but I can get rid of that out of the way. And I've got quite a lot of space to put more of this kind of thing in here. This is the roll cab from DJM Direct, which is part of the same group as Sealy. American Pro Ball Bearings, so you know it's good. Um, I've started putting some bits in here. I don't have the proper inserts just yet, but um, that is the eventual plan to have like nice foam inserts and have everything nice and super duper neat. Um, but so far, I've got my sockets in here, obviously. Um, and it's just, oh, it's just lovely. Um, obviously, bright orange. It's kind of like heritage orange from Ford, um, and it just really caught my eye. I had to get it. It's not the most super expensive roll cab in the world. It's not exactly like a snap-on or something that would cost thousands of pounds. Um, but for my purposes, for here in my home garage, it is absolutely spot on, and I think it looks fantastic, and it is a perfect fit. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, the height of this, I think, um, as far as I recall, I did uh, 95 centimeters from the ground, I think, which for me, and the height that I am, is like a perfect standing working height. If you're customizing a bench top in your own garage, you would do it um, based on how tall you are, and uh, I guess if you want to like have a seat in here, which, to be honest, I don't don't really want to have a seat. We're gonna probably get some shelving up here as well. Um, just more storage, just more utilitarian bits and bobs, um, and it's gonna be awesome. But um, I did all this in a fairly short space of time because of the whole quarantine lockdown thing. I had all the stuff sitting ready to go. I just didn't necessarily have the time to do it. Um, but with the quarantine lockdown, I had plenty of time to do it, and I, um, I got all this done in, in less than a week. And that's still with doing a full week of normal work, um, just doing weekends and evenings on this. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's awesome. Um, and this big box, you may have worked out that this big box is the part that I mentioned at the start, probably also in the title of the video. And it is a big box with the Mountain logo on. It is from Mountain, and it is the intercooler. You'll remember the last time that I did a garage update, I was actually talking about the intercooler stuff, the intercooler issues that I had with Mishimoto because I actually went for the Mishimoto intercooler. I went with their sponsorship to get a little bit of a discount and it was a pretty reasonable price, um, but they totally screwed up the order and then their customer service afterwards was absolutely horrendous in terms of trying to get it sorted out so eventually I managed to get it sent back and I've managed to get a refund um, but I kind of just sort of wiped the slate clean and I've gotten away from Mishimoto um, so then I was back to square one. I did ask for your opinions back then um, on in the comments of that video and a lot of you were saying stick with Mountain, wait for Mountain because of course Mountain had been out of stock at that point. They had got their V2s in at the end of 2019 but they sold out really really quickly um, and they were out of stock again for a long time and before that um, since I did the first video like way back I think that was in August of last year when I started talking to you about intercooler stuff um, they were out of stock of their V1 intercooler at Mountain and they were out of stock for a very very long number of months and 
I believed at that point that it was because they were preparing a V2, and indeed it was. Um, the V2, which is what is in here, um, is made by Pro Alloy, and so it follows the design philosophy of the Pro Alloy intercooler very, very closely, just with some tweaks. Some would say better, some would say sideways, whatever. It's still gonna be nice, good quality. So now, without further ado, let's crack open the box and see what is inside. All right, so on opening up, we see it's very nicely packaged. This is quite dense foam. We have our fitting pack, which has um, some brackets, bolts, nuts, and a couple of Jubilee clips. And then we have this other accessory pack. It's got your deflectors in there, etc. So we'll just move that out of the way. And underneath here, the big reveal. Ta-da. And as you can see there, it comes with a stencil and um, the stencil is nicely the correct size so that you know exactly where to spray your spray paint on. If indeed you want the Mountain logo on there, they used to have an option where you could spec it with the Mountain logo already sprayed on, um, but they don't do that anymore. They just give you the stencil and let you work away if indeed you should so desire. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it looks awesome. It's so, it's actually it's huge. It's really big and chunky as you would expect for an aftermarket intercooler. It's not very heavy at all. It is, of course, an alloy intercooler made by Pro Alloy, as you might expect. You can kind of see here, you've got like this Mountain logo, Mountain by Pro Alloy, so you know it's good. And you've got a little sticker on the bottom here. It says your batch reference, part number, blah, 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 test date. 31st of January 2020. Now, the, on the question of stencil, I am going to paint it. I have got myself some white paint. I'm going I'm going white. Some people have gone like nitrous blue and things like that, but I think white is just a nice clean color for logos. Um, so it's gonna be really easy with the stencil. We just literally have to spray over here. We will though need to cover up these end bits just so that we don't get any overspray of white onto the black here. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go and grab some paper to do that now and then we'll get it sprayed. Spraying, of course, once we get the paper on there, will not take very long. Right, so being a little bit of a stickler for detail, I did notice on closer inspection that the stencil wasn't quite in the middle, it was close, and it also needed to go down this way a little bit more. So what I did was I just unstuck the one piece of tape that was here, and then I repositioned it correctly, put their tape back down, and then added some more of my own tape just so that it is held in the exact correct middle position. Um, before I did that, I also wiped the underside with a little alcohol wipe just to to prep the area for paint. Um, so then in terms of paint, this is the paint that I am going to be using. From Auto In Parts, it is competition white alloy wheel paint. So you might ask why alloy wheel paint specifically? Well, it is quite hard wearing and they say that it can resist um, break dust, cleaning chemicals, road salt, etc., and is chip resistant. Um, so it just seems like the ideal kind of paint to use for this purpose, which is obviously right at the front of the vehicle. It's gonna be taking pretty much all of those things um, much in the same way as wheels do. I've used paint from these guys before and it is good quality stuff. Rattle cam paint likes to be warm, so if you warm it up a bit, um, it sort of increases the pressure of the gas inside and just gives you a nice ultimate even spray coming out of the nozzle, um, which is exactly what you want. So just warm it up. Um, it's a nice day outside, I left it out for a little while. Um, the other option um, that I've done in the past is to um, put it in a tub of warm water for a while. Um, but yeah, just until it's sort of warm to the touch. It will just give you peace of mind in terms of spray from a spray can. Not that it necessarily matters too much for this particular painting application. Now, this application is just a stencil logo so it can be a bit more rough around the edges um, but um, just in general that's what I like to do anyway. Uh, we do need to of course um, give it a really good shake up and then that will be ready to go. Um, now I'm going to get the paper out around the edge of this um, just, just to protect our black bits and then we will spray. Well, there we go. That is three coats on, 10 minutes apart. Coverage looks really, really good. So now I just need to let that dry for at least a day, I think. I need to just check the back of it and see how long it says to leave it. And then we will be ready to install. 
Well, there we go, that is the intercooler spray painting done. Drying in the garage, which I've stepped out of to let it dry and get some fresh air. That is you updated on the garage situation and the intercooler situation. I will be getting that installed very, very soon, so make sure you're subscribed for that. I hope you like this little update video. Please do like, share, and subscribe for more content to come very, very soon. Thank you once again. Goodbye.